911, what's your emergency? In the case of an emergency, there are three critical responders who are first to the scene. The fire service. The ambulance. and the police service. Working tirelessly to support our community, we meet face-to-face -face with these brave men and women who share insights into their departments, the roles they each play, and the key information you need to know in a crisis. 911 Emergency Bermuda is brought to you by the Lindos Group of Companies. This is 911 Emergency Bermuda. On today's show, we speak with several officers about the Bermuda Police Service, their roles within the department, the services they provide the community, and their working relationship with the other emergency services. Also, we look back at the 2014 motorcade, which showcased all the vehicles utilized by the police service, and one special vehicle designed by students at Cedar Ridge Academy. We begin our conversation with PC Christopher Brady. My name is Police Constable 2435 Christopher Brady and I'm currently employed for the past six years as a Bermuda Police, at the Bermuda Police Service. It started off as a, I was actually a police um, cadet out of, out of high school. I was introduced into to the service through the Bermuda College. Um, it allowed me to gain aspects of how the police service, service worked. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And as a young adult, between the age of, I say like 21, 23, I became a police reserve and spent five years um, giving back to the community that I, that I love so dearly. Had the opportunity to become a police officer and took, took the chance. And fortunately, I was uh, selected to become a uh, police um, constable serving the great country of Bermuda. Well, I've gained the experience of being with, I've been with my wife for 26 years. So if I go to an incident where it may um, come to the point where it's like a domestic dispute. I feel that I have the experience of being able to one-on-one, -on -one, being able to speak to, to the individual um, with the experience of seeing what people have gone through because everybody has gone through hardships. Everyone's hit, hit rock bottom and worked their way up. I myself have, have done that. And with the Bermuda Police Service, it's allowed me to do that. So I've seen both sides of of let's say the railroad track. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen bad where, um, you know, where we've all gone down and, and had to make choices. It's either put food on the table or electricity to where I can give advice to um, people on how they can better themselves. And this is what the Bermuda Police Service is about. It's empowering people because I am a firm believer that knowledge is power and by passing on what I've gained as a police constable onto uh, society or anybody that I come across, is it, it empowers them. I've been through uh, the training school. Um, I've also been on the police community where it's a everyday police officer where you'll see us um, doing um, writing tickets, going to incidences, um, being more involved, sometimes you'll, you'll see us walking, walking the beat. Um, I've also gone into the um, PSU, which is the Police Support Unit, which it, um, is more in-depth when it comes to dealing with more hard, hard situated crimes. Now I'm in the Record Management Support Unit, in which we've just started a new um, technology. And I've been given the opportunity in order to broaden that within the police police service. The new system has allowed us to implement more focus on directly on the people's needs. Um, once, once the system, what, what it goes through is that once somebody calls for assistance from the Bermuda Police Service, it goes through our um, dispatch. They're able to pinpoint directly on how many officers are needed and how to, to get there effectively. With the the information that is put into the system, it allows us to gain access into helping identify um, maybe some areas 
that li need a little bit more focused on, like more neighborhood watch. Um, so that's where we would send our, our CAT team. Um, we are able to um, react and respond correctly instead of um, just being more aggressive. We're now more, um, it's, it's able to, to say, okay, this is the needs of, of the community and this is how we're going to, to address it. The new system that we have, there's four um, fundamentals that guide the system. It's location, people, telecoms, and vehicles. Every time that someone has any interaction with a police officer or comes into a reaction at, with, at our station, it automatically goes into our system. So if it goes from a cat up in the tree to a kite flying to um, a road traffic collision, everything is kept directly into the system, and we're able to go back and see, um, for example, with road traffic collisions, if there's a specific area where um, there's a lot more um, accidents, let's say, for example, um, T Street, we, we now know that we, there's, we need to be more police efficient there. It just, it just gives us a broader spectrum of where the police need to be and um, how, how we can be more efi efficient. The best situation when it comes to calling the Bermuda police is the difference between emergency and non-emergency. Emergency would be a road traffic collision, um, something that deals with um, a fight going on. We would consider that an emergency, and I would call 911. A non-emergency would be kites flying, cats up in a tree, um, you know, kids, kids playing in, in the street at, at night then what I would recommend doing is calling your local police station. Um, for the Hamilton Police Station, I would two, it's 247-1704 for um, non-emergency situations. The process that goes on is that once somebody calls the, um, our dispatch for an emergency, it, they get the information of the um, time, place, and location of where this emergency is happening. They have, a, with the new computer system, they can then dispatch the closest responding unit to that, to the area. So for example, if there was a situation going on on Front Street and somebody called 911, with the new system that is in place, they can say, okay, well, this car um, is closer than somebody who may be um, a little bit further. So it, it allows them to direct the resources in a quick, um, positive way. The details that are needed is everything that you can provide for the um, attending officer. Um, if it's a um, RTC, a excuse me, a road traffic collision, I would say how many vehicles are, are there. Um, if ambulance is needed, um, if, um, is it, if anybody is providing first, first aid. The more information that you can give to our dispatch, the more information they can pass on to our responding officers that helps them get prepared. So, for example, I go back to the road traffic collision. If, if an ambulance is needed and you pass that on to a dispatch, then we can get, they can get the ambulance on its way instead of having officers show up there and then deciding, oh, this is what we, we need. If it comes to situations with um, a fight, I, I would give information as into how many people um, are there weapons involved? Um, is anybody seriously, seriously injured? So more information is, is best to, to give to us. Um, not, not saying that, um, you know, sometimes you may be put in a um, situation where um, you can only say so, you know, so much. Whatever information you have and you can provide, the Bermuda Police Service is willing to um, accept. The way that we get to um, dispatch to a, a um, road traffic collision is um, we'll get dispatch from our comm ops. They'll tell us the, the location, how many people are, are involved, and if they have any vehicles, they'll inform us on um, what the vehicles are. If the fire service is um, needed, they'll tell us that they're on our way, and the ambulance. Once we get there, we, ha we then determine or give a sit rep on um, how many vehicles and what, what do we see and if first aid is needed, we automatically go to, to that person. 
Um, if it's just a collision where it's damage only and you have two officers, usually the officers will split it up. One officer will deal with the vehicles involved whilst the other officer will either direct traffic or man, call the man the radio um, in order for needed um, resources. Um, we are trained to where um, if we need more resources, we are able to um, direct them to where we, we want to go. And if it's above, um, if we need like a traffic investor collision officer to come out, um, usually we'll inform um, our sergeant and they'll come to the scene and take over. The best person to become a police officer is someone who is confident, um, loves to give back to, to the community. Um, it, it, a police officer is a job, is a thankless job. You can only do your best, but unfortunately, um, sometimes people don't see, see that. I mean, if, if you want a job that where you get praises all the time, then um, the Bermuda Police Service isn't that. It's a job that is actually you have to love. I mean, uh, a lot of people join, for example, myself join because I love um, Bermuda and the community and I love giving, giving back. Um, it's anybody with, with passion and fire and desire, I would say, please come, come to be a Bermuda police officer. As the reward, yeah. um, it, it has expanded my, my um, growth within, um, within the service and as a person. I mean, I have people come up to me and say, oh, PC Brady, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, you dealing with, with, with the situation in a professional manner. Um, I love the fact when, you, when we're walking the beat and you see little kids, you know, wave, hey, Mr. Police Officer, how's it, how's it going? Look at the police officer. I mean, that's, that builds confidence in you and, and you know, it, it just makes you feel, you know, pride, you know, and that's what it is. Myself is pride because I, I truly, truly um, love, love Bermuda and the pride that it gives me back seeing that the community respects us, I mean, that's, that's more than, than, than I can ask for. Up next, we speak with Sergeant Derek Golding, who has the potential to one day become the Commissioner of Police. Well, currently, I'm a level one firearms officer, so I don't normally patrol with a firearm. 911, what's your emergency? Bermuda's number one community cable channel, dedicated to local programming. So when you can't get out, we bring it home to you. You're watching Channel 82. You're watching 911 Emergency Bermuda, brought to you by the Lindos Group of Companies. I'm Derek Golding, a police sergeant within the police service, and I currently work as a patrol sergeant. Well, I actually um, started the police service as a cadet in 2004, and I did an associate's degree at the Bermuda College. And I was also awarded the opportunity to get my bachelor's degree, which I did at Acadia University. And I completed that in 2008. In 2008, I started as a constable. And um, in 2013, I got promoted to sergeant. Um, I spent a year initially doing patrol um, here at ha within the Hamilton Police Station. Um, from there, I went into the criminal investigation unit, where you work as detectives dealing with burglaries, um, more serious assaults, uh, more serious um, things as it relates to money. Um, from there, I moved into um, the narcotics this, or drug unit, and there I spent two years there, two and a half years there as a um, detective in that division. So you see, dealing with the instances of importation of drugs, people with large possession of drugs, um, and I got promoted from the drug unit where I went to the training school as an instructor. So I was actually an instructor for the cadets also. Um, within the training department, I hold the portfolio as an officer safety instructor. So we're just basically training officers for open-end techniques, um, how to use their captor, um, their batons, their handcuffs. I also train officers um, to use tasers that you see on the streets these days. Um, then also in the training department, also do the drill instruction for um, them, which helps foster teamwork. 
and um, I also a first aid instructor. Um, since last year, April, I've been inside the um, Hamilton Police Station, the patrol sergeant. So it actually gives me opportunity to work with the two two last um, recruit classes and be a mentor to them. So you see them. You, I was with them within the training environment, and now I work with them um, operationally. So it can be able to be a mentor and say, "Well, we did this. We we knew we taught you this way. I liked how you dealt with that incident." So it's more of a mentor role that I play now. Um, being in the patrol sergeant arena. I wouldn't say it was a typical progression. I, I can say that um, me getting involved as a cadet back in 2004 has a allowed me to not only get an education, but allowed me to um, shadow officers. So I did have some exposure as it relates to how to best do interviews with people, how to best um, talk to members of the public, what's expected of you as a police officer, and which allowed me to um, going to training school confident that the, I, this is a job for me. Um, and with, all, with, with my exposure with the being on the patrol, coming out of training school, then doing detective work, it allowed me to um, learn from other people. So I, I was a, a mentee. And then go to narcotics where investigations are very technical. So it allowed me to focus on attention to detail, which helped me um, progress and say, well, I'm confident enough based on the experience I had as a cadet, as an officer of five years experience then for the promotion to go ahead and um, go for it. And then outside the, outside the promotion, since promotion, working in the training environment allows me to be able to adapt and know different people's learning skills. So um, I did get promoted just after five years, but it's also other officers that have done just the same. I'm um, 30, but I've been here 12 years this August, but time flies though. Well, my goal is to make it to the top, the commissioner. Well, when it comes to being first on the scene, it's all about scene management. So when you get there, you see what our priority is. Um, if it's to save someone's life, it's all to preserve life as fast as possible. From there, it's all about scene preservation and be able to um, minimize any disruptions to um, the general public if, we have to, if you don't have to. And basically, it's, it's all about scene management and preserving life. Well, my, my job as a sergeant is I may not meet, meet, meet the scene first. It's all about the information that I may have. It might be one of my other officers, they may get there first and they might ask for more support. So when I get there, it's, it's all about assessing what has been done and what needs to be done and be able to direct resources based on what's needed. Uh, coordinate, is a good thing about coordinating is through our dispatch system, I can request that I need an ambulance, I need a fire service. To, to lend support based on what's seen at the scene of, a, of, of an incident. Well, I know I used to work within the um, dispatch at one point. Um, I know that we have some, a system called a CAD system, which actually interfaces with the fire service. So um, the police and fire are working along the same system so we can effectively respond to stuff fast. Um, basically what we expect from um, people that are on the scene is to um, provide information that they believe to be relevant to us. We don't want them to encroach on us to impede us with what we're trying to do. So if we ask you to stay behind um, a court in somewhere, we expect you to stay there until we make appeal for you to get information from you. Yeah, video evidence can be good or bad. Um, it just depends on how it's used. Because video evidence can be used in order to get more information about who suspects are or, who, or how the incident actually took place. Um, it just depends on if you disseminate, say for example, videos from a collision scene, it, it doesn't help, it's not helpful in case, in, in the event it is, say, a fatal. It, we don't want stuff like that being disseminated via social media. But we can't really stop somebody from taking a video with their camera. Well, currently I'm a level one firearms officer. So I don't normally patrol with a firearm. Um, my level of training right now is level one officer. There'll be an um, authorized firearms officer. So I be able to, to guard crime scenes or um, say um, crime scenes or security at the hospital or court security. So from that scope, it's, it's a very important job. So it's about securing and making sure that people are safe, the members of the public are safe. And that's why we have deployed to do static um, positions with my firearm. But like I said, I don't normally carry a firearm okay. when I patrol. No, like I said, you just have different roles. So my, my role as a level one officer, my only scope is to guard static, um, do static duties with a firearm. And then you have other officers that you see on a daily basis. They're on a different level when, when it comes to the level of training they have. Well, when I arrive at the situation, this is all about um, assessing, assessing it. I'm trying to take it too personal when it comes to dealing with people you know or, or family members. It's all about being professional. 
So it's all about dealing with the situation as best you can, and then hopefully it's a positive resolution. I think is we try to deal with it as best we can when it comes to being on the scene. Um, when we get back to the station, we, we um, us amongst police officers might have a debrief on how what went well, what what um, what what areas we need to work on, and how we can best be um, if another incident arises that's of a similar nature. Yeah, we do have a system team. So the thing is, anything that comes as critical incidents, um, we do have support officers that, that we can liaise with to best manage it, manage and how to cope with it. We also have a welfare officer. Um, Dr. Ingerman, so, and we can go to her whenever we need. Being a police officer, you can be working behind a desk today, tomorrow you're working on, on the street. And the Bermuda Police Service is all about training the officers with, to the best of the ability to be whatever role they are. So anybody that's willing to learn, anybody that loves um, working with others, um, is not afraid to get involved, is the best person to be a police officer. Well, the most important part of, of the job for me is seeing people happy. Um, being able to go to a situation and be able to diffuse it and, um, and people thank you for dealing with it. Um, and also what's rewarding, it's no, no two days are different, so I never get bored. You do get involved in the police, it's all about, um, if you have to give any information, it's able to provide the information as best you can and to actually answer any questions that may be given. Um, going, to, going through the training school um, taught me about teamwork, um, taught me about relying on other people, um, gave you a lot of gives you a lot of information, but the, the course is spread out while giving information as relates to um, law and procedure and also how to actually manage yourself and how to be professional. Coming up next, Dwayne Keynes, Media Relations Officer. The bad guys also listen to the news and read the blogs and also listen to the radio. So we always have a balancing act of giving information but not giving enough information. 911, what's your emergency? Bermuda's number one community cable channel, dedicated to local programming. So when you can't get out, we bring it home to you. You're watching Channel 82. You're watching 911 Emergency Bermuda, brought to you by the Lindos Group of Companies. My name is Dwayne Keynes. I am the Public and Media Relations Manager for the Bermuda Police Service. I've had this opportunity since November 2001. It simply means you are the communication specialist for the organization, your proactive and reactive communications. Proactive means you're allowing the public to know what's taking place in their environment, and reactive, sometimes you're responding to questions and queries that members of the public have based on things that are taking place in and around our community. These are varied roles that we deal with. First of all, we are responsible for advising the public of critical incidents as they happen. So we do something called the daily report. The daily report is commonly called the crime blotter, where we go through our rollover. A rollover is a significant amount of activities that have taken place in a 24-hour period. We go through that rollover and we say, what can the public uh, learn from? What do they benefit from? And how can we put that in the public domain so that they can better equip themselves with making a, a decision? An example of that would be if there were a burglary at a, at a popular restaurant in a neighborhood, we will identify the, the location of the area and what the public should do to prevent themselves be, from becoming a victim. Also, you find yourself in 2016 of verification. Because of social media now, there are a lot of individuals that put information out there, but the information is not verifiable because it's coming from a very parallel source, meaning source that's very close to the ground. Sometimes that information is true. Sometimes it's close to the truth, and your job is to put the information out that the public can actually count on as being as close to the facts as possible. Now what we cannot say is all the details, and the reason why we cannot say all the details, A, because we do not want to put people's life and limbs or in jeopardy as it were. We also do not want to uh, do anything that may affect a future investigation and or a court appearance. So we will like, usually what we would say is the age 
approximate age of the victim and or the suspect, the location where it happened, and also what advice people in the area should know. And then we typically will have a place where people can actually get information or leave information. So we typically would say the police number, which is 29500011. Sometimes people do not want to use that number. And what we simply would do at that point was give the Crime Stoppers number, which we get the information, but the Crime Stoppers is an independent body that is located in Miami, Florida. People give that information there. They become a number, and that number is then, they call that number in, so it's a way for people if they choose to stay anonymous. We also liaise very heavily with the media. Right now, that's Burr News, that's uh, Channel 82, of course, ZBM, VSB, Royal Gazette, Today in Bermuda, and also the radio stations. If anything happens, what we do is communicate with them first so that they can translate and transfer that information onto the listeners and or viewers. An example would have been the road traffic collision and then fatality that took place on Monday. What we would simply do is say, here's where it happened. Here's an approximate age of the person, and here's what we need you to tell your public. They then will come to the scene, and what they will typically do is document it. We look for witnesses. We also have road closures at the time. So the media, they're one of our key partners. I hasten to say is sometimes they're your best friends, and sometimes they believe we're their worst enemy because a lot of times we cannot tell them stuff because we're trying to protect the integrity of an investigation. And sometimes too much information can also work against the Bermuda Police Service because the bad guys also listen to the news and read the blogs and also listen to the radio. So we always have a balancing act of giving information but not giving enough information. We also maintain our website, the Bermuda Police Service website. We also have, we're all in the blogs as well. We do vlogs, blogs. We actually videotape all our press conferences, any interaction with the public at the grand scheme, we videotape. So we have all social media, we have a Flickr account. We consider ourselves an agency in Bermuda that responds in real time. My goal is at 30 minutes after a major incident, we want to give the public accurate critical information so they know how to actually balance themselves and also make the critical decisions that they need to make. The, the job is very interesting because you see you're front facing and that means you interact with the community so we actually help police officers as they develop relationships with the community. So one time my office comes alive is during police week because we do very dynamic events. We do things with the schools, we do commissions for a day. I'm sure two years ago you can remember when we had the big uh, parade of vehicles. And what we wanted to show the community is this, in fact, are ways that we connect with the communities. Bermuda, we have a very testosterone-driven community. What do I mean by that? Men, males, boys love bikes and vehicles. So we said, what better way than to connect to your community by showing them over a period of time the vehicles that have been policing in our environment. When we come back, more from Media Relations Officer Dwayne Keynes. Social media is the new thing that everybody is, is dealing with. So we get trained in what's the most effective ways to communicate in a social media age. 911, what's your emergency? You want to be in a Linda's commercial. Or do you have any experience? A little. The name's Di James, straight out of Wales. Have you ever worked with animals? I have a pig, a fish, a cow. So not much experience. Are you funny? Some people say I am. Can you say this? Lindos, why go anyplace else? Lindos, why go, why go where? Hmm, not go with lines. Do you like the heat us? Not really. Don't call us, we'll call you. Next. Bermuda's number one community cable channel. Dedicated to local programming. So when you can't get out, we bring it home to you. You're watching Channel 82. You're watching 911 Emergency Bermuda, brought to you by the Lindos Group of Companies.
The Emergency Measures Organization, they're a body that is mandated by government to get together and during critical times, i.e. storms and hurricanes, to make the best decision for the community. Now that simply means we have all of the head of the relevant government departments, the stakeholders, the community stakeholders, they come into a room under uh, the direction of the governor led by the police commissioner. And what they simply do is they make the best decisions to ensure that we are safe and the government assets and resources are best mobilized before, during, and after the storm. So what my office is responsible for along with the Department of Communications and Information, but my office specifically is the emergency broadcast station. And of course that's 100.1 FM. And what we do is we go there and on the bottom of the hour, which means uh, at the 30, 12, 30, for instance, and at the top of the hour, and we give information to the public. I've had the honor of doing that for five specific times. Two of the critical times were during Fabian, and obviously everybody just remembers Gonzalo that just happened. Um, and so what we simply do is we say the information as it comes in from the agencies, government departments, as well as members of the community. You literally work for the whole time, so you go in about 12 hours before, and you leave when it's over, and you work on full rotation until that time is done. Most people would have heard myself, Robin Simmons, and Amisha Murray on the storm during that time where a mixture of DJs, uh, reporters, and just about air comforters during that time, and that's a role that we really pride ourselves on. My motto in my office are, when our community is at the worst, it is our responsibility to be at our best. And it's a service that we provide for the community and something that we take very seriously. What happens a lot of times is that you're one of the first people at the scene and your job becomes twofold, which is to identify what are the critical messages we want to get to our community and also find a way to keep the media informed but also in a place where they can do their job unobstructed but not put themselves in a position to obstruct police, also put themselves in harm's way. Sometimes when you're dealing with the media, it's like herding cats because they're looking to get the first story, they're looking to break the news, and, and, and to a large extent, the Bermuda media are very accommodating, they work with us, but you're managing the scene. Bermuda is very unique in that when you come to a scene, there's a 90% chance that you know the victims, you may know the suspects, and there's a whole community dynamic where you may know everybody that's in the environment. So your job is to maintain your level of professionality whilst being sensitive enough to the victim, their families, and the people in the community who A, want access to information, they also want to know what's going on, and in some cases, they're enraged because it's a critical matter where they feel aggrieved sometimes, maybe by the police force, the police service, excuse me, and or someone else. So you have to always be mindful of those community sensitivities, and so you're always juggling between being sensitive and being responsible in the role that you are. You also see a lot. Unfortunately, when you get to the scene, you see the worst of who we are, and sometimes you see very unpleasant situations. We're talking about deaths, road traffic collisions where you're seeing people in very compromised states. And it takes its toll on you because those images, unfortunately, are in your head. Um, I have been blessed with, I process it through family, and faith, because I recognize, as I was told early in my job, and that is, you're going to have it come out at some point in time. It becomes your responsibility to determine how it comes out. And so what I try to do is manage it with the people that I love and with my faith. I have also have people in my life, when it gets too heavy, I find a way to let it out, and that helps me to process those emotions. But one of the things we don't deal with a lot of times within the, the services is how the first responders deal with it. My organization, which is Bermuda Police Service, they also have resource, we have CISM, which is a critical incident stress management system where you can actually go, you get professional help, and sometimes it's peer related, and sometimes they can recommend you. A lot of times, officers 
and or support staff feel that you're going to be labeled or stigmatized because you go for help. My position is a strong man seeks help when he can. And so we have the resources in place, but it doesn't make it any easier when you're going through it. Just this week, I was on a scene and reported on something, and then I found out it was one of my friend's family. I've been in scenes where you're reporting on something, and it's your neighborhood. During the gun crisis, it was very intimate because there were family and friends who I had on both sides of the spectrum, and your job is to always be impartial. During Fabian, we lost colleagues and friends. So a lot of times, this becomes the reality of working in emergency services, and that's dealing in a very small community, having access to individuals that they may be family, they may be friends, they may be community members. A lot of police officers also, they may have to show up and lock up or deal with a family member, a church member, a community member. So it's about the maturity of carrying out your job without fear or favor, but also training. We underestimate the training that we go under. A, in my department, most people are qualified in communication science and also public relations, but we also go over to the United States and the UK every two to three years to find out what's the latest in our craft. So social media is the new thing that everybody is, is dealing with. So we get trained in what's the most effective ways to communicate in a social media age, where everybody now with a phone is an eye reporter. And what we recognize is our job is not to stop people, it's to ensure that they do their job, they, excuse me, they get the information out responsibly. So we know trying to stop people from using a cell phone is the equivalent of trying to put toothpaste back into the tube. It's never going to happen. So we say, listen, make sure if you're going to use a cell phone, you do it responsibly. Know that anything that you record on a cell phone has the potential to actually become evidence to either help or to harm you. And recognize every image that you capture. The question that you always have to ask yourself, what would I do if I were on the other end of that image? So it's about being responsible. Responsibility means you make good choices with the tools that you've been given. So we've embraced social media. We've embraced people who use technology. We're saying let's make it work for all of us. But when technology becomes a tool that works against the community, then we have to do our part as the Bermuda Police Service to deal with those individuals. Of course, we've all seen those images that have been circulating with less than honorable images of young people, women in compromising positions. That's when that social media works against us and it becomes our responsibility to deal with it. We are the educating arm of the Bermuda Police Service. We say these are the core messages and this is what we want you to have access to. So what we do is ensure the community has the information that they need to make the best decisions to keep them safe as well as informed. 911, what's your emergency? Coming up right now, a special look back at the 2014 motorcade. Today is a very special day for Bermuda Police Service because October 1st, 2014 signifies 135 years of policing in Bermuda. To that end, we want to celebrate in grand style and we will have a police convoy of vehicles. Uh, yeah, today uh, we are uh, going to be departing uh, from Cambridge Road in Somerset at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're setting off on a 32 vehicle uh, convoy. Uh, we're covering the entire island uh, all the way down to King Square.
I'm here with Fernando and also uh, Rudy. Now, both of these gentlemen have forged a phenomenal partnership that is the Bermuda Police Service with Noble Auto and Cedar Bridge. It gave us an opportunity to work with a community partner, but also to work with Cedar Bridge young men and young women who have gifts and talents and to use that to work for their community. Fernando, tell us about the experience. What was it like working in the capacity of teacher as well as mechanic, body paint, all the things that embodied this experience? It was a lot of fun. A lot of the students got a lot of talent. Um, the best part was trying to resurrect something that was going to the graveyard and making it to the car that we have behind us. Uh, we have a division called Sick Motorsports and Cedar Bridge Pro Shop. And the young kids are really talented to get into the Cedar Bridge Pro Shop program and they get the apprenticeship program through workforce development, Bermuda College, and we have several students away in university as well. And Rudy's been working with them, I've been working with them and all my guys. And it was a lot of fun to build a race car for the police force. Um, we're glad to support the police force, they do a phenomenal job, they're out there in all these crazy times and having a, a heck of a time dealing with this stuff, so we thought we could make it fun, support the police department, and get the youth involved with the police department. Coming up next, we speak to Sergeant Clifford Roberts. One of the cameras actually rotates, covers the entire island. And also, we speak with Chief Inspector Tracy Burgess. I think the Commissioner has strategic plans in place uh, to deal with those issues, and I think uh, by him uh, making us see his vision of how he's controlling it, we actually carry out his vision to control it, and I think it, it's, it's working very well. 911, what's your emergency? Bermuda's number one community cable channel, dedicated to local programming. So when you can't get out, we bring it home to you. You're watching Channel 82. You're watching 911 Emergency Bermuda, brought to you by the Lindos Group of Companies. Welcome to the Police Come Ops Dispatch. Um, I'm Sergeant Roberts of the Bermuda Police Service, one of the four supervisors that manage our police communication center. Within this, organ this unit, we are detailed to deal with all emergent and non-emergent calls and provide efficient and effective service to our community for whatever reason they may require some police assistance. 
as you can see today, we have two officers working, Officer Wainwright, Officer Seely, that's part of my support team that helps me to deal with and manage the resources that we have in providing service. In COMOPS, as we call it, uh, we have four shifts. They're all managed by one supervisor and a support staff of three. And we do a 24-hour coverage providing services over the island. Okay? Um, today is very peaceful thus far, and that's how we like it. We don't use that keyword um, in hopes that we, we just try to avoid anything else happening that's serious. Um, part of our day-to-day -day routine is providing stop check when the units are out on the street they're conducting stop checks which means they're dealing with um, traffic offenders or just making inquiries to ensure that all our traffic users are that they have valid driver's license no warrants out there or they may be responding to other emergent or non-emergent calls and again it's up to us to ensure that we provide that service um, as you can see looking around the office we have the CCTV, which provides assistance for us. One of the cameras actually rotates, covers the entire island. And we use that to help us with um, provide resources to locations, whether it be to provide service for incidents that are going on, whether it be antisocial behavior, or that can just provide assistance when officers need um, assistance in giving evidence in court. So it's, it's, very, um, it's a very unique situation in Comox because we deal with other outside agencies. We have BAS Circle who manage the CCTV, the fire department. When we are taking the 911 calls, we have to ensure that we listen in on all the calls, whether it be medical or non-medical, and provide resources to support that, that medical team that goes out there and helps the members of the public. Um, we also deal with or get assistance from other agencies like Works and Engineering, um, the hospital, Belco, Telco. Our responsibility is to ensure that we liaise with all those agencies, if need be, so that we can ensure that the general public are not inconvenienced at any time. Um, that also may include the PTB and the media, which is very important because by utilizing the resources that we have, we have to ensure that the public are not inconvenienced at any point. And that means we have to make sure that we're in contact with them quite frequently and as fast as we can to provide a, a effective service. Officer Van Wright today, in come ups, a lot of people don't know, and even police officers, they don't understand what actually goes on in here. On a day-to-day -day basis, we have, today, like I said, we have two officers, Officer Van Wright, she's monitoring channel one, which deals with all the, she, she is responsible for dispatching units to any call, any call for service. Officer Seely over here, he is monitoring our channel two, our talk through channel. And that means if any units require talk through just for any outside operations, he can monitor that. But on a day to day basis, if he's operating channel two, we sometimes have the roads policing units on. And he has to do stop checks or provide information for those officers when they're out there, um, giving information relating to warrants, like we mentioned earlier, driver's license uh, for the vehicles, any, any type of um, communication that's needed in here. Um, another thing that we, we do is, um, again, liaison with the officers. It's, it's a very complex situation here at times. As you can see, it is sort of peaceful, but when the time arises for us to actually step up and deal with serious incidents or critical incidents, our responsibility is to keep our senior command aware of what's actually going on. And that may require myself as a supervisor to provide an email or phone calls for senior officers on call to get resources that may be needed. Um, and it also, will entail getting in contact with firearms officers so that we can ensure that we provide safe service to our community. Sometimes it's very, very peaceful. Now, one thing I would like to really uh, stress to the members of the public is that within this office, when 911 calls come in, it's important that the caller gives directions to the location of where they are, where their emergency is, 
give um, they can give color color of the house and sometimes even a common location and you'll find the caller members of the public you will find that the officer that's taking your 911 call will actually ask you a lot of questions name contact number and that doesn't mean that no one's being dispatched because that call taker is getting as much information for his colleague to dispatch a unit that you don't see or hear from and also the 911 calls let it be emergency we transfer the calls to the fire department they may ask you the same call same questions so just be bear in mind that that is part of our responsibility to monitor that call while they're taking the same information and we'll dispatch as well so be patient with your 911 calls and just be um be assured that the police are doing everything they can to assist you to get efficient and effective service in a timely fashion. I'm actually um, Acting Chief Inspector Tracy Burgess and I actually run the um, police support unit. I've actually been in this position since April 2015 so I've only been in the position for about the last 10 months. Uh, but having come from a history of being in this department as a constable uh, and then going on the street as an inspector as well, um, I think I'm the first female actually to take over this role. Um, as the inspector of the police support unit. I can cover any basis uh, that an inspector's role covers, such as if they need me at a moment's notice, if there was a riot to go on and they need a bronze commander, then I can actually bronze command as well. I'm actually, um, most inspectors in the organization are also firearms incident commanders, so I can actually um, lead a firearms incident as well. I can lead the troops on the ground for that. I can command that. Um, my role here is um, at the police support unit is actually um, basically maintaining public order. Uh, that's what I do, I'm in charge of that. So if something was to come up involving public order, they would call on me to get the troops and to uh, maintain public order. I think being a female, there's always challenges in any organization, uh, not just the police service. Um, uh, I would say yes, there are challenges, uh, but nothing that I can't handle. On a night, such as a Friday night or a Saturday night, um, we go to our uh, known locations, what we call known locations of um, such as um, 2A Deepdale, uh, St. Monica's Mission, uh, Milltown, Court Street. We'll also patrol Front Street to see what's happening at the local bars. Um, if there's any uh, sort of um, party that's going on, functions that is going on, football games, uh, those are our mandates. So we would actually go to the football games. Um, it's all about high vis uh, visibility policing. It's about proactive policing rather than reactive policing. So that's what our role is, going out and uh, being proactive. On a night that uh, we experience where it's quiet, um, we would definitely call it a, a success for the police service. It means that we're out here doing our job and people see us as doing our job. Uh, we're showing high visibility policing to the public and we're making sure that they see us and that we're around. I love my job. Um, I come into my job loving it. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's any day that I wake up that I don't think, uh, where most people can wake up and go, oh, I really don't want to go to work today. I don't. I get out of bed and think, oh, I'm going to work today, uh, is what I live for. I want to serve and I want to protect the community. Critical Incident and Stress Management Unit. Uh, absolutely, uh, we have some um, well-trained people in that department and if something should happen within the organization where a police officer needs that department, they are there right on the spot. They, they, without hesitation, you'll have someone from the uh, SISM team come out and actually deal with you or ask you if you need help. Uh, well, I relieve my stress in a couple of ways. Uh, one is golf. Golf is very big on my list for, um, for relieving stress. Um, as I said to the commissioner once, you let me play my four hours of golf and I can work for you seven days a week because I, I think it's the best stress relief. But I also like charities. I also like working with charities and giving back to the community in charities. Um, I play a big role with the foster parents in Bermuda. Um, I think it's a charity that's... Um, before, a couple of years ago, uh, they didn't get much support in the community. Uh, we, me and myself and another lady by the name of Lindsay Durham, we've changed that. So people know we have a big golf tournament uh, uh, in aid of foster parents. And uh, last year we've raised $50,000 for them. So that's a stress relief for me as well, being able to help charities. Well, I have seven years until I can retire. Um, I'll be 55. So that's a mandate for a police officer 25 years or 55 years of age, whichever comes first. Um, lucky for me, my 25 years is 55. Um, so it, it depends on where the organization is going at that time. Um, 
if I reach the next level of um, chief inspector, which I'm hoping to, to reach superintendent, if I reach that level, then I can stay till I'm 60. And I probably will stay till I'm 60. I think the commissioner has strategic plans in place uh, to deal with those issues. And I think uh, by him um, making us see his vision of how he's controlling it, we actually carry out his vision to control it. And I think it, it's, it's working very well. I can remember uh, when I was a constable, um, I dealt with uh, a young gentleman at the time. Uh, he was 16 years old and um, I was taking him down to get methadone because he was addicted to heroin. And I remember in the car, in the, in the backseat of the car, I had a conversation with him and I was just asking him, you know, how do you get addicted to heroin? Like you're 16 years old, how did that happen? Uh, and what makes you go back for that high? Just try to understand someone uh, that's addicted to a drug. Um, and he was telling me a story about, you know, he, it, it's all about going after that first high and you would never understand. And, and, then, and I said to him, no, I would never understand it. I said, but you're only 16. You have every opportunity now to change your life. So why don't you just try and change your life and try to get off this drug? So years later, um, I was in the gas station, 24-hour gas station, in uniform, and this young kid comes up. Well, he was young. He was about 21. He comes up and taps me on the shoulder, and he says, um, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, yes, I do, and I called him by his name. And he goes, wow, you do remember me. And I said, yes, I do. And um, he said, well, it's because of you. He said that I now own, I now own my own construction company. He says, and I've never touched drugs since. So he said, at that moment, I just felt this is why I've joined the police service, is because it's about helping people. It's about helping people through their struggles. And hopefully that just by talking to them that they listen and hopefully they can change their life. And this young kid changed his life. Call 911. Uh, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call the police service. Call our, our number 295-0011. Uh, don't be afraid to speak to the police on the street. Um, we're not your enemies, we're your friends. Uh, so don't be afraid to speak to us. Don't be afraid to give us the information that you think that could help us solve a problem or solve a crime.